Hey, what's going on everybody? On today's project, I'm gonna show you how I extended the concrete slab in my backyard and kind of outline all of the lessons learned along the way because I made a ton of them and it was definitely a disaster in more than one spot. So let's get into the video. Hey, what's up guys? This is actually my first concrete project, which will be very apparent as we progress. Um, so I really should have gotten a professional, but I started out by excavating down about 10 inches. Then I went back and I power washed the existing slab to get it all clean for the next step. Here I am showing you the existing conditions, and as you can see, it's in terrible shape. So I really should have demolished everything and started from scratch, but I really didn't know any better. So after excavating down 10 inches, I hand tamped everything down to get it compacted. And then I went over to the quarry and picked up some 57 stone, which will be the base for my concrete slab. So I really probably should have used Crusher Run since it compacts a little bit better, but this 57 stone will be better for drainage. So I'm loading everything up there, and then I went back and tamped everything everything down to compact it. So once all the stone was in place, I grabbed some 1x6 lumber to use as my concrete form. And I secured all that in place with stakes, as you're seeing there. And obviously, I made sure the corners were square. Okay, so basically at this point, we have the outside forms put in place. And then what I did here is I put one on each end, and then I'm just checking the level of it. So we look pretty good level there. Um, we're not planning on draining it to this side or that side. What we're gonna do instead is we have the level there. So essentially, we have a slope going away from the house. So essentially, the water's gonna come on this side and drain away from the house that way. So the reason I have that hole there is because that is exactly where my deck is gonna be bearing. So I wanted to kind of create a faux footer. Might not have been a great idea, but it'll work. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a chalk line and I'm making the marks on the cinder block, which are gonna indicate the top of slab elevation. So I'm getting everything level there, making sure the drainage is appropriate, and then marking that with chalk. Now, there may be other ways to do this, but this seemed to work for me. So where the existing slab is going to meet the new poured concrete slab, I decided to take some half inch rebar drilled with a 5 8 inch um, masonry bit and go about four or five inches into the existing slab and I'm going to drill that in as you'll see in a minute and the idea is that this will be additional concrete reinforcement along that change uh, from existing to new which will hopefully prevent any kind of separation at that joint so as you can see I just kind of drilled into it about four inches I did this about five times across and then once the holes were drilled I took some of this epoxy and I went and I applied that within the pre-drilled hole. And once I had it full, I took my rebar and inserted it through. And again, with the idea being to create a strong joint between the existing slab and the new concrete that would be poured. So next up, I grabbed some steel wire mesh and I cut that to serve as reinforcement for the new portion of concrete slab that's gonna go above the stone. So here I am cutting that out to size with some snippers and you'll see later what that looks like when we actually pour the concrete. Now, because I'm only gonna have about two inches of concrete over the existing slab, I use something called weldcrete, which helps bond existing concrete to new concrete. So I thought it would be a good idea to apply this to all of the existing slab. And here I am just applying that with a roller. The idea being that this will help bond the new surface layer, which will be about two inches to the existing concrete. And that's just a quick zoom in showing how the slab is a little bit thinner, obviously, on the existing portion. So now it's finally time to pick up the concrete bags. It ended up being 85 bags of this high strength concrete mix from Sacrete. I got the bulk price and then I rented this mixer for $48 for four hours. So the final cost came out to just over $400 as you're seeing there. So once everything was mixed up, my brother and I poured everything out. We did a bunch of these batches and just poured it all over, starting with the new portion of the slab and uh, where he applied the wire mesh as needed to reinforce. Then my brother and I screeded out the top layer to try to get a uniform layer. Obviously we needed to fill in some low spots there. And, uh, and then we just kind of went and started finishing it. 
So I really had no idea how to finish concrete, and I started off with this hand trowel, which worked okay, um, but this is kind of where things started going downhill. What I really needed was a bull float with a long handle extension where I could smooth things out from the side and not have to walk over it, and this would just allow you to get a much cleaner finish. Instead, I had to use this stupid hand trowel, and as you'll see in a minute, the finish was terrible. And finally, I used this concrete edger around the edge to give me a nice smooth corner. So here's a look at the finished product. Obviously, it's a disaster. It looks terrible. The finish was awful. So to try and fix this disaster, I used some more weld crete on the top layer, and then I mixed up some new crete, which is just a concrete topper, and then I mixed that up and applied it with a squeegee, and it definitely helped the appearance, but it still looked rough. So this wasn't my best work, but I did want to publish this to show kind of my mistakes with hopes that someone can learn from it. Now, let's take a look back. If this video it taught you something on how not to pour concrete, um, I really would appreciate it if you could drop a like down below and also leave a comment on other things that I did wrong or some additional pointers so that next time I can do a better job and you can also leave feedback that's going to be helpful to somebody watching the video. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.